What's going on YouTube? This is Mark here, Waste Deep Weight Fishing, Southwest Florida. I um, want to wish everyone a happy Memorial Day. Keep it safe, keep it tight, keep those lines tight, and uh, keep your eyes on the water. There's going to be a lot of things going on out there. Hats off to everyone for liking, subscribing, and sharing. We're almost at that goal. Please, if you like the video, if you're viewing the video, hit the like button and the subscribe button, and make sure you tickle that notification bell just so they'll let you know when my new videos are put out okay that being said let's go ahead and discuss this topic and you don't really hear too much about it and we're gonna go right into it because I think it's just something you know I watched a documentary on it and I've talked to a couple of captains about it I haven't seen too many videos on it um, it was rare to find the one that I did and uh, I decided I want to make a video on it and let everyone know so without further ado, let's jump into it. Are you ready? How does snacking affect the bite for redfish, sea trout, and snook? Snacking. Where the hell did that come from, Mark? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Snacking, we all do it. I do it. You do it. She does it, he does it. It's part of life. Guess what? Fish do it too. And when they do it, it will affect the bite. Now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna throw some uh, some scenarios out there for you on what you can do when the fish are in snacking mode. But before we do that, let's just talk about this. Okay. Um, Redfish, we'll put that out there first. Um, redfish love to eat shrimp, love to eat crab. They'll eat a bullet, they'll eat a pinfish, they'll eat a greenback, they'll eat just about everything that's on the flat. Um, a trout pretty much will do the same, and so will a snook. Okay, do they have their favorites? Sure they do. Um, but they're predators, they're gonna eat what's available. So the scenario, Summertime, everything is smaller. So, you know, we're heading at the end of August now, you know, going into our winter season, and things are about to change. You know, the, the bigger shrimp, okay, um, have came in already, you know, last year. They've laid their eggs. They have, uh, you know, the smaller shrimps were born. They were in the back country. You know, now they've moved out onto the, you know, they've, they, they've, they've spread out. Um, the water's going to cool down. And those smaller shrimp that may be in the back country or on the flat right now that are one to two inches, well, you're going to see in the next two to three months, those one to two inches um, that were in the back country, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, well, now they're going to be three, four, and five inches out on the flat, and they're there. Um, that goes with, you know, the, the size of the bait, the pinfish, the greenbacks, um, and also the blue crab. Oh, well, what, what does that mean? Okay, well, these fish are used to seeing small baits right now in the summer, okay? So by throwing these big, big, large baits out there, because of the, the heat of the day and the heat of the water and you know water clarity and what's going on with the ecosystem, it all depends on your area, it, you know, they may be in snacking mode. What I mean snacking mode is they're not looking for a big meal, but they're op op opportunistic feeders. So what's gonna happen if they see a little shrimp scurry by or a small pinfish scurry by, or maybe a small blue crab, they'll take a you know, they'll take a whack at it. They're snacking. They may not be in full feeding course. And I've seen this over and over and over again. And I'm sure you have as well, where you see a school of fish, it doesn't matter what you throw at them. They won't eat it because they were in snacking mode. You know, they're not in hunting mode. You have to entice them. That's where the term snacking comes in. Um, you know, people say, oh, well, they were there, but they just weren't feeding. No, they were snacking and you didn't entice them. 
That's the difference. Now let me throw another scenario out there. There used to be a lady that, um, you know, we used to go to her restaurant or, or basically her coffee shop and, you know, breakfast shop years and years ago. And, you know, she, and, and I'm sure, you know, this is nothing new. A lot, of, a lot of places do this and I have done it for years. But this lady would do it and it would work. People would come in the, in the morning, uh, you know, they'd have their cup of coffee, and get, you know, getting ready to start the day. Some were hungry, some weren't hungry yet, and they just wanted to come in for a cup of coffee. But she wanted to make money. She wanted to sell breakfast, because that's where the money was. The money wasn't in, co in cups of coffee. The money was in the bacon, egg, and cheese, you know, the, 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 the sausage, you know, eggs and, and biscuits, and uh, so forth and such. So. You know, how did she get those people out of that snacking mode? You know, some people would come in for a cup of coffee, you know, maybe, a, you know, a, a donut or a roll, whatever. But she wanted to get them going so they would spend money in her restaurant because they were snacking. So what she did was basically before she would, before she would open up, she'd come in, a, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes early get that griddle going, and she'd throw on a little bit of onion, some of that breakfast sausage, you know, maybe a little bit of bacon, and get, get that, you know, get that, that grill going and smoke it, get those smells of the morning, the smell of breakfast in the air. So as soon as she opened that door, as soon as the customers come in, they sit down and get a cup of coffee and get a whiff of, you know, that, that, that fresh cooked sausage or that fresh cooked bacon and, and, you know, maybe a few eggs and some of those hash browns and immediately be like, you know what, what do you got on, what do you got cooking back there right now? Oh, I've got, you know, sausage eggs and, 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 and I've got biscuits and I've got hash browns. Oh, I'll take a plate of that. The moral of the story is she got those people out of the snacking mode and into feeding mode and that is what you need to do for redfish, sea trout, and snook on the flats. And how do you do that? Well, the first thing you need to do is put something in front of their face that they would eat. Now, if you see tons of the same bait on the water and you see those fish on that flat and they're not hitting that bait, there's a reason why they're not hitting that bait. Because they've snacked on it already. It's not enticing to them. What do you need to do? I would suggest when you're out there, carry three different types of scent on you. Carry a shrimp scent, carry a ladyfish scent, carry a blue crab scent, especially when hunting redfish. Okay, if you see tons of bait, and you see redfish or you, you've walked, you know, you've pulled the flat or walked the flat and you see a couple redfish scurry off, but you see bait all around you and they're not going after it, there's a reason why they're not going after it. It's because they don't want it. They're filled up on it. So, what you need to do, take that information, get your spoon or soft plastic, something that could resemble, okay, what's in, what isn't in the water at that time. So if you see a school of mullet and pinfish and greenbacks and you, you see and you see redfish and they're not hitting it, throw the gold spoon. Throw the blue crab spoon. Throw the shrimp imitation. Throw the blue crab imitation. Throw something out of the box to get them out of the snacking mode. And get them out of the snacking mode, you know, get them away from what they've been snacking on. Because chances are that bait was plentiful and they're tired of it and they want tired of that bait and they want something new to feed on. Those little tips, okay, and little tricks can be the difference between you catching one fish and five fish while you're out on the flats. Just use that information. I'm not saying, you know, it, 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 it's, it's the, the secret. It's another tool in your toolbox that can help you when you see schooling fish and they're in snacking mode and maybe be able to get them to turn on when they're just not that hungry. 
use the smell, use sense, throw something out of the box, something that doesn't look like what's on the flat. Understand the redfish, the snook, and the sea trout. They don't only just like white bait, okay? They'll eat shrimp, they'll eat crab, they'll eat mullet, they'll eat ladyfish, okay? Those are all the different types of scents that you can put out there on a bait that can turn a day when the fish are snacking into a day that you it may be one of the best fishing days of your life. With that being said, I want to say thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. I hope my information helps you further. And don't forget that term, snacking. Because it's something that, you know, it, it, it really, really um, taught me something. You know, I always thought that those fish, you know, they just weren't hungry. They just weren't turned on or the tide wasn't right. No, they were snacking. See you on the next video.